Hi guys, we're asked to do a volume of rotation question today. The question is, we have to find the volume of the solid formed when the area enclosed by the curve y equals x squared, i.e. the red one, the x-axis and y equals three, oh, sorry, x equals 3 is rotated through one revolution about the x-axis. So this area enclosed by the, these three uh, lines is going to be equal to uh, this area here, so the scribbly area is the area that we're going to have to rotate around the x-axis. Now, the method by which we do this is based on the principle of integration and how we find a, the area of a circle based on its radius. So basically, the way that we find the area of a circle is using, we all get taught this at a very young age, the area of a circle is equal to pi times the radius squared. Now, what we're going to be doing is we're going to find the area of infinitely many circles between the boundaries of 0 to 3. Now, the radius of all of these different circles is going to change as we go from 0 to 3, and the, the reason the radius is going to change is because this upper bound or the y equals x squared function changes. So what we're going to do is our radius is going to be whatever the y value of our function is at a particular x value. So the radius is going to be equal to the function of x that forms our upper bound which in this case is x squared. Now there's a mathematical uh, tool that we could use to combine all of these infinitely many circles from 0 to 3 that we're going to stack on top of each other, and that's integration. Because what we're going to be doing is we're going to get lots and lots and lots of cross sections, which will be the circles at all of these different uh, x values, and we're going to put them all together to find one final volume. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be integrating through 0 to 3. So the volume of this is going to be the integral of 0 to 3. Of all of these circles stuck together. So we're going to have pi r squared and it's going to be in terms of x, so dx. Now, what we then do is I'm ba explaining the basic methodology be behind the formula before we actually use the formula. What we then do is we then substitute in our r value, which is the function of x, and we get our stock standard um, volume of rotation formula, which is the volume of rotation. We can take the pi, because it's a constant outside the front of the integral, to make the integral easier for us to work out. Pi times the integral, and it's going to be a definite, we'll just put a and b on here because those are our boundaries of integration, times the function of x, which in this case is going to be x squared, but then we have to square that because the radius is being squared in our equation here, dx. So this is the one that you're going to be shown in your textbook The work. Sometimes instead of f of x, they'll put y in there. But that's the one we're going to work with today. So the way we're going to go from here is we're going to go, well, the function of x is equal to x squared. So in this case, we've got x squared. So I'm going to put that into my um, volume equation. I've got my pi still out the front. I'm going to put boundaries on this integral, so the lower boundary is 0 and the upper boundary is x equals 3. So I'm going to stick those on, 0 and 3. I'm then going to insert my function, x squared. I'm then going to square it as well, and then we've got the dx component on the end. So what we're left with then is we're left with, well, the volume is going to be equal to pi times the definite integral from 0 to 3 of x squared 
squared. So the indices will times. So we're going to have x to the power of 4 dx. Now, from here, all we have to do is actually evaluate the integral. So let me just draw an arrow up to here. So we go about evaluating the integral. So we have the volume is going to be equal to the integral, which is going to be add 1, which is 5, divided by 5. So we're going to have x to the power of 5 over 5. Now we've got to put our pi on the front. Let's not forget that. And then that's being evaluated between 0 and 3. Cool. So what we're then going to do is we're going to substitute in our values. So this is going to equal to pi times the integral, the antiderivative evaluated at 3. So it's a 3 to the power of 5 over 5. Subtract 0 to the power of 5 on 5. And what we get, what we're left with there is 3 to the power of 5, where we have 3, 9, 27, 81, 243. So the volume is going to be equal to pi times, and what we've got in these square brackets is we have 243 divided by 5. And finally, we can just multiply the pi into the bracket and finish up with volume is then going to be equal to 243 pi on 5 units cubed. And that is the volume enclosed by these three boundaries rotated around the x-axis. So there is a specific method for rotating things around the x-axis. If you understand why we're putting the formula in, why we're squaring it, why we're taking the pi out the front of the integration, then you shouldn't have any problems applying this to any kind of uh, function that you put in as your upper bound, which you have to rotate. So I hope that helped, and I'll uh, see you again next time.